Yeah, Dolly's forgettable, to be honest. It was just something, we, a sort of mm. B-side we were writing. It's quite an early thing, wasn't it? We played it live a couple of times. We played it at the Underworld. Yeah, Dolly was quite exciting for the first rehearsal and the first couple of gigs, and then sort of became way over-excited. Yeah, it was sort of one that didn't quite work. But High Rising, however, is, is one of the best things we ever did. I yeah, think. I love High one. Rising. Yeah. I remember I had a cold when we when we, uh, when we when I recorded the vocal and the, I really <laughs> yeah I really like the vocal on it. It's got it's it, there's something really rich about it. I think partly because I had a cold. You know how your voice sort of changes and gets all mucusy. You hide among the cover and wave as the aeroplanes go by. There's nothing to say. When you sleep all day, but bye -bye. We kind of went into um, uh, West Side Studios, which is literally five minutes from where we are now, I think, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's around the corner. Oh, it's not anymore, I think. No, I think it's it was. gone. Um, it's and gone. to record it, and, and we went in. We had a song, because um, you'd written, I remember, we write, I, I remember writing my bit on, on tour when I was in Manchester. Yeah. I had a little dictaphone, I was sort of singing into it, trying to sort of like, almost create a kind of like a travelling studio thing. I had a, a portable cassette player and a dictaphone, that was my studio, sort of thing. Um, and I wrote, wrote my part, and then we, we kind of took it to the west side, and I think it was... I think this is a real key, key song in, in terms of what, came, what happened with Dogma and Star, because I think this is very much you trying to, trying to sort of write a, a big sounding song but without a, a, a kind of a, without a rhythm section really or traditional ry rhythm section yeah you know throwing lots of stuff at it you know I think mm. the harmonium is, is really key part of the sound is lovely yeah I remember I borrowed the keyboard of my brother and it had a, a, this sound and I, re I remember recording this at home in, in my flat in Camden and um, and then but I didn't know what harmonium was so when I Really, Ed said this is the sound, it's a harmonium. I said, well, let's get a harmonium. <laughs> I didn't realise what it was. So it's, you know, harmoniums are pump organs, but they're notorious because they're for being out of tune and creaky and noisy and, and quite difficult to play if you've never, you know, literally from going from a MIDI piano to um, a Bosendorfer, it is, it's exactly that. And uh, going to a harmonium, and I just like said, well, look, we'll get a harmonium and I'll play it on that. And it, right, and I remember it taking half a day to get a harmonium and then me saying, yeah, of course I'm going to play it. Just, just mic it up. I'm, just, of course I'm going to play it. And oh, it's terrifying, you know, because it's really hard work. It, it, you know, it was for the first time I'd ever seen one. And um, but, um, but yeah, but it's good. And I remember getting a um, an orchestral um, bass drum in as well and whacking that and stuff. I mean, it was when we were going on tour. We we're going on European tour the next night. I remember Literally we left straight. Time. We left straight from the studio and we had like two days to do it. Yeah. And, um, I remember listening to it on the plane to Finland. Finland was, yeah, the, was, the, first, right, was yeah. the first gig of our of our European tour. Mm. We were listening to <clears> that on the on the plane. And we, I mean, we, to be honest, sir, at that point we hadn't been rehearsing or anything. We'd just been doing stuff, and uh, this song had come up. We, if we'd gone into the studio, the fair thing to do to a group would be to, we've got this song, let's go in and, and jam it out. That's what everyone would have done. And I really, and I was really nervous of doing that because I felt that it wasn't, I didn't think it was the right thing to do. It wouldn't benefit from it. It wouldn't benefit from it. And that's really hard to, to explain to other people when you're in a group, when there's four of you. And, um, but I just thought all the time, well, I don't care, you know, in it. Just had to do the best thing, you know, the thing that, and that's that's really hard. I think it put me in a really hard position. I mean, Ed encouraged me anyway, so that was, he was always on my side about that that idea of just going in, let's create. Partly because it meant he could create as well, because he could then get out the synths and stuff, or at least say to me, well, well, try this out, or whatever. But it was it was hard to explain that to the other two. I think to get it was hard to get away with it, and I think it became more difficult. But I really love High Rising. I yeah, really so. love the the ending. It's really emotional. Yeah, it's, it, it's a great song. I mean, it, when you record like that, it gives you the opportunity to um, to, to not be. You know, there's certain times when recording with people in a room at the same time is dynamically unbeatable. Um, it's it's really magical and really hard to predict what someone else in the room is gonna is gonna do to to respond to what you're doing. And that's you know for certain songs that is 
you, there's no replacement. But but there's certain times as well where we're actually building on what you've done on your own and doing it step by step. It, it also has this, you know has the same effect. And a lot of those songs um, worked like that. And um, and don't forget as well, I wasn't there when Brett was singing, you know, and so I'd, I'd be building bits of music, you know, with Ed and stuff, and then just assuming what would happen when he came in, you know, and, and, and also I guess from building, like, there's a big climax at the end of that song, and I think I just always assumed uh, that, well, <laughs> you'd, you'd, you know, Brett would get that and uh, know exactly what to do, you know, to pull that off. Uh, that, that's quite a... That's quite, um, uh, confident situation to be in the group. I think it's a level of, of, of kind of um, almost uh, telepathy in a way. When you when you're writing with someone, you know exactly kind of what you know. Bernard gave me a piece of music. I sort of know exactly what he wanted me to do out of that sort of thing. I think he sort of trust me to be able to do that in a way. And lots of the things, even though lots of the vocal melodies, I did, we didn't sort of sit and write together. You know, I think he. His suggestion of the kind of chords and where they were going would suggest, you know, there was, there was lots of that thing. And things like Big, Big Time, that, that I think that was a real, you know, just the kind of the mood of it. And, you know, yeah. It just sort of suggested this thing and the, what the song should be about.